okay, looking at indirect import and then this complex supply chains with multiple OLRs case. So those will be fairly complicated uh, uh, slides, so please bear with me. The indirect import is a bit uh, simpler, I would say. We will start with indirect import. So under an only representative setup, uh, the indirect import into a said market means that the manufacturer of the substance does not necessarily know that one or, or several other companies outside of the, this said market, for example, the EU, is also supplying this particular substance or substances to this market. You'll see this in, in the next slide to explain it a bit more in, in uh, visually, if you will. Only representative coverage is also possible in these indirect import cases. However, this OR coverage cannot be given unless the following applies. So it means that the OR is allowed to cover indirect import by this uh, company who has appointed them as an OR. In most cases, they do provide this. I would say this is a default that the OR can also be allowed to cover in indirect import cases. And of course, that the annual volumes of a registration registered substance permits it. So of course, if you are already importing at 999 tons and your registration is just from 100 to 1,000, then of course, there's not much volume you can uh, allocate to this indirect import. So, so that could be something you would have to check with the manufacturer formulator who has pointed the only representative whether they want to then increase the tonnage ban of the registration where applicable. So important to understand that this only rep, uh, this indirect only representative coverage is not mandatory and it, it, it is at the discretion of the manufacturer for formulators appointed the only representative. Whether to support this indirect import or not. So next, let's look at this visually and maybe it makes more sense. So now we have a standard case, if you will, of only representation. So if I take my laser pointer again, we have a manufacturer formulator. Let's call it the manufacturer to, to keep it very simple that they're placing a substance on the, on the market here in the EU as an example. But this, the same applies for Turkey and, and uh, Great Britain. So you can just uh, consider these, these cases analogous to, to them. They have appointed an only representative who is currently covering three importers of the substance under direct import conditions. So this means that the manufacturer formulator is directly supplying the substance in this case to these customers. And the only representative knows these customers and covers them, in other words. If a, if a, a customer, an importer, is not known to the only representative, they cannot cover them. Therefore, the only representative always have to know who are the recipients of the substances to a, a said market from this company who supported the only representative. However, when it comes to indirect import, it means that you may have one or several companies outside of the said market in this case for example outside of the eu or the european economic area who are also customers of the manufacturer formulator who are then maybe uh, repackaging the substance and then sub subsequently uh, providing it to another customer down the supply chain who is not anymore visible to the manufacturer formulator who then in turn places these this substance on the market for new other customers so these for for this construct to be allowed the only representative must know who these customers are they must know the volumes that come from this company supplied into into the uh said market in this in this case EU and they must have permission from the manufacturer formulator appointing the only representative to also cover indirect import 
if it is okay by the manufacturer formulator, they have said that yes, we are also covering indirect import, then by all means, the only representative can do this. And in many cases, this particular actor in, in the supply chain do not want these customers to be known to the manufacturer because they might be competitors in some sense. Therefore, in some cases, the only representative and this actor outside the said market who supplies this, uh, this chemical products to, to this uh, market can enter into a non-disclosure agreement. It means that this only representative actually knows more about the whole market for this manufacturer formulator substance, for example, in this case in the EU, than the manufacturer formulator themselves, and will not disclose information about these manufacturers or, or uh, anything else to, sorry, these customers to this manufacturer. So these, this is called indirect import because it comes indirectly from the manufacturer formulator appointing the OR into the market. And in some cases, only the only representative will know this. In some cases, this uh, company says that we don't need an NDA, it's fine to tell, tell, us, uh, tell the uh, manufacturer formulator about us. And in those cases, we disclose the information and that's fine. But if, if they want to keep uh, things confidential, then an NDA is in place. Typically, of course, if they ask us not to disclose, we would not disclose regardless whether there's an NDA in place or not, but in some cases they wish to have it. So very good to understand that the only representative is taking care of these import obligations centrally. So in order to be covering these also under the OR appointment, meaning that they would not have to do their own registrations, the only representative must know who these are and must know the volumes that they are importing. So how does then the uh, own representative get to know the indirect importers where permitted by the manufacturer formulator, of course? So it, typically, uh, the in this case, the manufacturer formulator would inform relevant clients outside of the said market that their uh, uh, they have appointed a re, uh, only representative, for example, for e-reach purposes, for e-reach. And if there are any indirect cases, then uh, you should contact the only representative directly. This information can, in some cases, also be included, for example, in, in the safety data sheet or in other product communication. But essentially, the information should come from the upstream manufacturer formulator who's appointed the only representative. Then it means that these indirect importers can then directly contact the only representative to seek this coverage. So, so it is good, good to know that, of course, in those cases, we need to have a, a permission to cover indirect imports and, of course, then see to it that if these indirect importers want to be covered by an, only rep, uh, by an uh, uh, confidentiality agreement, then this is, this is uh, done. And then we do, would not disclose information to the upstream manufacturers of, uh, or formula to appointed us as the only representative. So as mentioned, this really means that in practice, in some cases, we as an OR know a lot more about where uh, customers who have appointed us as an OR, where their substances end up on a set market, for example, in the EU or, or, the, or Great Britain or Turkey. So that covers indirect imports. So it is possible, definitely possible, and something we do on a regular basis at Regional.